Um, so this talk, unlike all of you, is totally not about betrayal. I can promise you it's not about betrayal. Honestly, honestly, it's not about betrayal. Um, it's actually about a dog. Um, and it's also about one of my, one of my close friends, Jake. Um, so I met Jake when... Um, I realised I didn't put my notes out. Um, so I met Jake when I was in Nottingham. Um, I'm not sh quite sure how we met, or like what led us to becoming friends, but we did. And then, most times when he was up in Nottingham, um, we'd probably find the time to hang out. Uh, we'd probably get some food, and we'd play some board games. This is the story of playing one of those board games. Um, it's the story of playing Dead of Winter. I, I hear some laughs there already. <laughs> um, if you don't know Dead of Winter, um, it's a board game um, where you're all controlling a colony. It's a colony in like an Arctic expanse and also happens to be zombies. Each player controls a faction in the colony. Um, each player controls a couple of characters. All of the characters are human apart from Sparky, Sparky the stunt dog. Um, Jake, would you like to be reintroduced to your friend Sparky? Um, so Sparky is a wonderful dog. Sparky is a stunt dog, or was before the zombie apocalypse uh, started. I'm not sure you can still be a stunt dog once that kicks off. But he's highly trained. Um, he's got a good nose for searching out zombies and food. And he's a bit like of an all-round cute dog. He's, he's great. He's like a golden retriever. He's lovely. Um, so in this game, there were a few of us playing. And we got to the point where it's the middle of a game and everyone was looking for characters. Um, we'd all started with two characters and everyone had been looking for characters. And I think everyone had gotten like, extra characters apart from Jake. Um, and he was getting a bit frustrated about this. Um, like you could see in his like, face and the way he was playing, he was getting frustrated that um, there were other players with like, two, three, four characters, and he didn't. And then he found, while well, searching the grocery store, he found, he found Sparky. And he got very, very excited about the fact that he'd found uh, Sparky. You could see his face light up, you could see like a smile on his face and like the light in his eyes. Um, and everyone laughed when Jake realized that in the rules of the game, you can give Sparky a weapon. You can give Sparky a gun. <laughs> so Sparky was his new favorite character. He was gonna run around with Sparky, he was gonna fight some zombies. Except, except I wasn't laughing. Um, I wasn't laughing when uh, Jake gave Sparky a gun. I wasn't laughing or smiling at, at his reaction because I knew I was about to do something monstrous. <laughs> I was about to betray Jake. Um, so, so the thing is, um, in Dead of Winter, there's one person that is a traitor, and that was me that game. Um, and Jake had twigged onto this like straight away. Um, like he read my face when I like saw the betray traitor card, and he was like, "You're the traitor." But I managed to sow enough doubt throughout the game. So that everyone else, like, they thought I was the traitor, but, like, maybe we shouldn't exile him just in case he's not. Um, so we got to a stage where um, I realized that I couldn't win because everyone was too suspicious of me. Um, but they hadn't kicked me out yet. So I could actually lose the game and lose the game for everyone. I could, like, bring the colony down and create, like, this huge unsatisfying moment where everyone loses. And, and I decided to do it just in the moment after he got Sparky because I'd seen an opportunity. Um, so, Sparky was in a grocery store. There was a load of zombies um, stood outside the grocery store. And I realized that if I could kill two characters, the colony's motivation would drop to zero and everyone would lose the game. And it was my turn. And I realized that I had one character that could move. So I decided to move to the grocery store. I decided to make a load of noise and draw a load of zombies there, killing both my character and Sparky, the wonder dog. I'll leave you to imagine how Jake reacted. It was kind of dignified, but I think you were quite upset. <laughs> um, so a friend once really elegantly described board games to me, um, and, it, and it kind of sticks true. Um, so he described them as board games are safe spaces to be, to be bastards to your friends. 
Um, and I think it's a true statement. And like a big part of what makes board games fun is to be able to do something to be like with your friends, whether that is betrayal or whether that's like fighting like ruthlessly over resources. Um, they can be really liberating, cathartic, and let us play through things that we normally don't get to. But they can also be a little bit fragile. Like we don't magically enter an alternative universe when we play a game. Like real life can still bleed through. So my second story is um, a story of when this happened. Um, so while I was planning this talk, I got reminded of a time when I made a 10-year-old boy cry. <laughs> um, this 10-year-old boy was called Tom, and he was my boss's son. Just, just to add that in there, you know. Um, so we're playing a game called um, Two Rooms and Boom. It's a big party game. Um, for those that don't know how it works, um, there are two teams. And you're, split, you're shuffled up randomly, split into two rooms. One team is blue, they have a president. The other team is red, they have a bomber. And basically, you play in rounds, and between rounds, you swap people over. And at the end of the game, um, you're trying to get the pres if you're on the blue team, you're trying to get the president and bomber in different rooms. If you're on the red team, you're trying to get them into the same room. In this game, I was the bomber. Uh, so I was the one that everyone was trying to get into um, like the same room as president. So we started the game pretty well, because we kind of worked out who was on our team in our room very, very quickly, and we were outnumbering the blue players in that room. So we decided halfway through the game to like, play a little bit with the blue team's mind and switch the bomber and, the, uh, and a couple of our, my team members into the other room to take control of that room. And the moment I walked in, um, this 10-year-old boy, Tom, my boss's son, came up to me and said, can we share details? Because um, you, you can share like, bits of your card. Um, so we, fir we first agreed to do a colour share. So we, you just share the corner of your card, show what team you're on. Turns out he was on the blue team. Um, me and my friend that had just gone through were on the red team. And then he asks to do a full face share, which is where you show exactly what role you are in the game as well as what team you're on. So my friend agrees to it. My friend shows that he's a red team member, nothing special. Um, Tom, the 10-year-old boy, also does the same. And he looks at me, and he says, your turn. And I look, I look at his card, I look at my card that I'm holding, and just look him in the face and go, nah. <laughs> and put my card back into my pocket. And you can see like the tears forming in this 10-year-old boy's eyes as he like, accuses me of being a betrayer before running to his dad. And I'm just like, oh, God, did we do something bad? I, I couldn't do anything different. Because if I'd shown that I was the bomber, like, it'd have ruined the game for, like, the 30 people that were playing. So I had no choice but to do that. I could have maybe done it in a less harsh way. That is true. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, luckily, it, it had a good ending for him because, although the red team did win, um, we won as a bomber. As soon as I, like, put my hand up to go, yeah, I'm the bomber, we've won, um, he was just like, yeah, I knew it was you. I knew it was you. And he felt vindicated. It was great. <laughs> I think those tears were worth it. Um, so, like, my last point, I just want to talk a little bit about betrayal in games, because actually, as much as I'm talking about this, it's not always my favourite mechanic. Um, <laughs> like, as much fun as it is, sometimes, um, I, I kind of feel like it can be a little bit of a lazy mechanic um, in a lot of board games, especially. Um, and I think it's kind of... So, I think there's two reasons for this. One of them is like betrayal is introduced into games and it's always done in the same way, which is um, one of you is randomly the betrayer. And I'd really love for there to be games where you make that decision yourself because I think like the interesting part of betraying someone is why you make that decision and how. But I think the second part is that I think it, betrayal is in like so many like board games because it's the only emotion board games has quite worked out how to do in a reliable way. Um, it's like quite a strong emotion. Like anyone who has betrayed or been betrayed knows those feelings. Like it, it hurts for a bit. It hurts while you're playing that game with someone. But it's just like this situation where there aren't that many other like emotions explored within the games. And I'd, I'd love the, for there to be games that like use love or use sadness or use hatred in a more reliable way within board games. And maybe that exists. And I think it does exist in like some places. But if you are like a designer, I challenge you to try and uh, replicate more emotions in your games. I think that's it. <laughs>